Hello, this is Tina Tiainen and you're watching Tina Tiainen Television. Today we have this beehive back here. It's called an aviary. This is on my farm in the very back here. And uh, this is the beekeeper, Paul. And we are checking out these hives right now and educating small children about the wonders of bees. Let's go. Bees today, kids. <laughs> There's only one queen in a hive. There's only about 5% of the bees are drones and the rest are worker bees. Worker bees are all female. Have you seen a bee movie? There's boy bees that talk about Stinging. Remember one of the characters says, don't sting, don't sting. Well, that's actually that would actually never happen because boy bees don't have a stinger. They can't sting anyways. Only the girls have stingers. They're called workers or, in a very special case, a queen. But I'll show you some of the, some of the parts of the beehive. So I have a, uh, an example beehive here. And the reason this one's empty, this is a hive that, that did not overwinter last year. It was full of bees and they actually died. They ran out of food and they starved to death. Which, is, which happens in four years of keeping bees, I've had one out of 12 colonies actually die. So I've had a very good overwintering rate, but it does happen sometimes. So inside of a beehive, let's take this off. And this might, may or may not be there. Normally I'd have an inner cover, actually I don't have, my inner covers are all out on the hives. But this one has honey in it. So this is honey in these cells. There's some nectar in these cells. And there's some, some, some honey dripping down. How do you get the honey out? I will show you that in just a minute. So what will happen, so the bees will live in these frames. Oh, and there's bees. Those are actually dead bees that didn't survive last year. They're not alive. Rest in peace, guys. So <laughs> these, are, these have been dead since last spring. Now. You might think, well, what bees would want to use this? You know, why don't I clean this off? The bees will clean this all up. They'll clean up these dead bees. They'll clean up these honey drips. There's dead bees in here. They'll clean it up and make it beautiful again. And I actually caught some wax moths in it. It's these little cocoons. Wax moths are a pest that I have to worry about. That's something interesting I've never dealt with until this one's wax moths. But. So typical beehive, I'll have two boxes, and they're about the same. Do they, do you leave the king, the queen in it so they don't get mixed up? There is always a queen in the hive. If the hive loses its queen, then they have a problem, they have to make a new queen. Let's say the bees are living in this box, and let's say it's a small hive. If I'm a beekeeper, I'm gonna come up and work this beehive. This is my smoker. Here, do you wanna see me light smoke here? Holy cow! <laughs> you like that, Michael? Queen makes a pheromone, so a pheromone's like a, a smell. That's how she communicates with the other bees. And so if I come and I, I mess around in this hive, the queen's gonna tell the other bees with her pheromone, say, attack that guy, go sting him. Well, if I come first and I smoke the bees a little bit, that will mask the queen's pheromones so they can't smell her giving off the defense um, pheromone and it'll do another thing this is debated but some people it's caught people usually think this but you know scientists aren't sure this is true but the bees might think that, the, that there's a fire that their hives on fire and so then their reaction is to eat honey and get out of there so if I smoke a beehive and I'll lift up the lid I put some smoke in I would do something like that and I let it sit for a minute then I'd open it up and if I pull out a frame, if there's bees in there, all the bees will be just with their heads inside of, not all of them, but most of them, with their heads inside the cells eating honey because they think that the hive is on fire. So they're not busy stinging me, they're busy eating honey, and they don't know that the queen's telling them to attack anyway. What you'd see inside of a typical hive is there'd be bees everywhere, but they're doing different things. Worker bees are bringing in nectar and putting it in the cells. They probably have some 
pollen in some of these if I find the right ones. All right, inside of these cells, it's kind of dark. This is not a good example because it's old pollen, but this is pollen inside of some of these cells. It's not runny like honey. And when we get out to beehives, I can show you a better example. This is not a good example. So some bees are bringing pollen and nectar. Some bees are taking care of the baby bees. So what the queen will do is in these middle frames, she'll lay eggs in some cells. She'll lay eggs and baby bees will start to form. You have a brood nest about this big in the middle of the frame, and about these middle frames. And you'll have some worker bees are called nurse bees. And they'll be taking care of the baby bees, feeding them, uh, they call it honey? bee bread. No, they actually, the queen will mix honey. That's a good guess, Mike. Well, it's close. The bee will mix honey with pollen, and it's called bee bread, and feed the bees bee bread. What I do <laughs> is certain times a year, the bees need extra food, especially after I take all their honey. In a few weeks, I'll go harvest honey. Well, why are the bees making all that honey? No, they're not making it for us. Well, they are, but they don't know that. They're making the honey so they can have enough food to get through winter time. And for their babies? And to feed their babies so they can make it through winter. Because they, all winter long, they eat honey to keep warm. They stay in the, bees don't hibernate, they don't, they don't migrate, they stay in this box and they eat honey and then they shake them, I think they shake themselves and that, that generates heat and that's how they keep warm. Well, if I take all their honey in a few weeks, what are they going to eat to get through winter? Nothing. Well, there's still going to be some fall flowers, but they're going to run out of food. So then I start feeding them syrup, sugar water. If I didn't do that, they would die. So, so uh, I'll, I'll, they start dying in the winter time? Well, no. So that they don't die, what I do is I mix up sugar and water. I put it in this jar. I poke holes in the lid. And then I invert it right here in this, in this little feeder. And the bees can come and go out of this in, come out of their entrance, come and go. And I'll do this all all during the fall. They'll, they'll take that sugar water. They can make honey to get through the winter time. Now the honey that I extract for us to eat, I won't, I don't I don't use sugar water to make that because nobody wants to eat honey made out of sugar water. We want honey made out of nectar. Another way I can feed them, I can put this lid on top. I take this big jar. I can fill this jar with sugar water. It has this little nipple. I can invert it, and there's a hole right here. And it can sit there. That way I can feed them a gallon at a time. I only have to come out once a week to top it off and fill it up. In one week, a bee, bees can you eat all of this and they'll store it and make honey out of it to get through winter. Holy camoly! Yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> okay, where do you think I got my bees? At beehives? Can you just like order them and they come in the mail? No. no. Are you sure? Sure. Actually, you can. Holy you can get bees in the mail. How do they ship them in the mail? Actually, mine didn't come in the mail. I ordered mine with the bee club. We ordered a whole bunch, like a few hundred packages. But you actually can order them in the mail and they come in something like, like this. Like 1,000 of them? 1,000? Well, pretty close. Uh, maybe 3,000. You can order. <laughs> I, if I order a three pound package of bees, there might be about 10,000 bees, I think is the number, in a package like this. And there's this can in the middle. And it'll be full of syrup. Now I cut holes in it, but normally you just have these three little holes, just like this, inverted, and it's full of syrup. And also inside will be one of these things. What do you think this is for? like a special little cage. So most of these would be in this big cage. Why do you think there would be one special little cage? Queen. Yes. Baby. Oh. The queen will be in this special little cage inside. Why? Now why don't they just let the queen walk around in with the rest of these? Because it... Because it, it... It doesn't want to get hurt. Yeah, that's one good reason. Because actually, when I buy a package of bees, there's beekeeper in California. They just dump a whole bunch of bees in here. And then they throw a queen in, and the bees don't know that it's a queen they've never seen before, and they would actually kill her if they're not used to her. So they put her in here to protect her. Another reason is, even if they did accept her, they might start building honeycomb and starting to make a hive. Well, we don't want them to do that. We want them just to hang out in this box. So they'll put the queen in this little cage, they'll put a cork in the end, and she'll be in there, and they'll hang it right here, and then they'll fill this with syrup, and that'll keep the bees alive for, I don't know, a couple weeks even, until I get them and I put them in my new hive. Then how do that, how do, 
Does the queen get food? Nurse bees, or her helper bees, I should say, they'll take syrup out of the bottom of that can and they'll go and they'll feed her through the screen. They'll feed it to her. So they'll suck it up. They have like those little straw mouths. They'll suck up the honey or the syrup and then they'll spit it out into her mouth. And by the time I get them, they're already, they're used to her. They like her. So what I'll do is I'll take the lid off. It's an empty hive. And then I'll just shake this upside down, shake all the bees out. So then the bees will land on these combs and they'll just crawl in. I'll just set this next to the hive. There are some bees, some bees in there still, but they'll crawl out. And I'll take this queen cage and I'll just drape it over the middle. What I'll do, actually, I'll take that cork out and I'll get a mini marshmallow and I'll stuff it in there. Because she can't get out, but the worker bees will chew through the marshmallow and release her in a, within a day or two. So I'll just put that there, I'll put the lid on. I'll come back in a few days, she'll be in there, she'll be laying eggs if all goes well. But sometimes you can have like a, uh, up to a 40-50% failure rate requeening. But I think in a normal year you might have a 75% success rate. I mean sometimes they'll kill the queen, they won't accept her. But hopefully they'll accept her and she'll start laying eggs. So that's how I start a new beehive. But anymore I don't have to buy bees because I just make my own queens. So how do I make my own queen do you think? You, you find what I do, I might take a frame of good brood, meaning baby bees, from a strong beehive that has eggs in it. I might take a frame like this that's full of eggs, and I'll put it in a mini hive like this. And actually, here's an example. This is brood right here. These are baby bees. Now they're dead. They died. But this is this is a good example of what, what brood looks like in the center of a of a frame. The reason these bees are dead, this came from a beehive where I had a laying worker. I had a worker bee that thought she was the queen. I was, she was laying drone eggs and um, I didn't like that so I took this out and I put a good queen in and, and got rid of that bad queen. But I might take a frame that has eggs like this, put it in there, shake some bees in there. Now I have a colony with no queen. They'll take an egg and they'll feed it a special stuff called royal jelly and that royal, when they feed the, her the royal jelly, she'll um, that, that egg will develop into a queen bee. So I can make my own queens, so I don't have to buy queens out of from California or Florida or wherever. Oh, here, do you want to you want to try and smoke this this hive? Well, I'm not allowed to. to well, your mom's right there. You can ask her. Could I? Two hands. <laughs> okay, hold it. Two hands. Now, careful. This metal part's hot. Now, pump it. Squeeze it. Look at that. Come smoke this beehive. There you go, that would work. What do you think this thing is that I have sitting on top? Uh, I don't know. When you open it, they don't come flying out. It's a good out. guess, but actually they can. They can get through this. There's there's only a few bees in the hive that can't get through this. Uh, and the one we, I, I don't think, I'm not sure if drones can get through. Actually, I'm not sure. Drones are bigger. But one, queen, one bee that can't get through this is a queen. It's called a queen excluder. So what I do actually, and I haven't told you, is these the bees will live in these deep boxes. But there's another size of beehive that's a little bit smaller. I don't have any up here, or another bee box a little smaller, and, uh, and I don't have one here because they're all down on the hives. And it's called a super. It's a smaller box, and that's where the bees put the honey that I'm gonna that I'm gonna harvest that we eat. Well, I don't want the queen up there laying eggs. I don't want brood up in the up in the in the in the in the supers where our honey comes from. So I might put this on top. All the bees can get through to put to make honey, but the queen is stuck down below. So this is how we can control where the queen goes. This would keep the queen down in this bottom box. So she wouldn't go up top. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you learned something today. This is Tina and that's Paul. And uh <laughs> Would you like some? <laughs>